now available in paperback and on ebook platforms such as Kindle and Smashwords. Isis, Bride of Dracula, the goddess next door, teams up with John Haynes to take on the Dark Vampire Lord in this Isis series adventure. Pick up Isis, Bride of Dracula at your online bookseller today. Over the last year, I've been noticing some new disturbing behaviors among writers on social media such as Amazon.com, Facebook, and Goodreads. And over the last year, I've been noticing writers and Facebook group moderators doing things like leaving snarky comments on people's books on places like Goodreads, leaving one-star and two-star reviews on places like Amazon.com and Goodreads, and then some Facebook group moderators changing their rules every week or so just because they don't like seeing a whole bunch of promotions. And when I look at these behaviors, they're the type of behaviors that discourage people from getting more interested in reading and discourage people from trying the work of people like self-published authors. And I look at these behaviors and they remind me of the time period from about 2000 to about 2009 when print-on-demand publishing became a bit more popular in the publishing world. And during that time, when, the print -on when authors were starting to self-publish with print-on-demand, we had a whole host of authors who were published at trade publishing houses looking down their nose at self-published authors and getting really nasty because they were starting to see some serious competition come out of the self-published and print-on-demand areas. And what these authors would do was try to attack the authors um, and some of the print-on-demand houses by saying that the books are made out of poor quality, that the covers weren't so great, and that the writers weren't very good writers, and that they had things like spelling errors and grammatical issues and sentence structure issues. And some of it might have been true. However, this type of snarkiness and backbiting was not fostering a positive relationship in the publishing world. All it was doing was creating a divide in the publishing world that pretty much led to the, part I think, believe partially to the publishing collapse of 2008. Because I believe if some of those writers had not come at people with that negative attitude, they, they might have been able to help some of those people start selling books and then bringing them into the mainstream, and that might have pro helped prevent that publishing industry collapse of 2008. Because I look at that publishing industry collapse of 2008, and a lot of it, I think, had to do with a lot of people thinking that they were, a lot of these literary elitists thinking that they were so much smarter and so much better and so superior and they were promoting pushing these books that were 900 pages and so literary but the audience wasn't interested in that type of work and I look at what's happening now in the age of ebooks and it parallels that right now the same almost similar type of hostile environment that was around during the early days of print on demand and in this time period, I'm seeing, again, those same types of behaviors. You have writers, again, being very, very snarky, dropping snarky comments on somebody's um, book in the Amazon.com reviews, um, or they'll go to a Goodreads. Some of these cowards, what they'll do is they'll, they won't go to Amazon because that's a public forum, but they'll go to Goodreads and they'll drop a nasty comment on a book and they'll drop a one-star review over there and others will do things like when a guy is promoting on social media try to attack that writer on social media and these behaviors as I see it you know this is creating a hostile environment in the publishing world and this type of behavior does not really go well with the customer because the customer is going to places like Goodreads, the customer is going to places like Amazon.com and some of the customers are even going to Facebook and they see this type of behavior and they're going to get turned off. And the reason why they're going to get turned off is because it's extremely unprofessional for people to do this. I mean, when it comes down to writing, it's about what's on the page. And all these behaviors are doing is taking people away from the page and having them look at stuff that's going on social media. That's not going to help anybody sell books and that's not going to help anybody 
get interested in reading. All that's going to do is discourage people from reading. So when I look at these behaviors, they're just not constructive towards the business of publishing. And a lot of people really need to take a minute to step back away from the keyboard and stop being a keyboard warrior and start focusing on being a business person. Because if you are a business person, you're going to look at that big picture and see that not only are you keeping this writer from getting new readers, you're keeping yourself from getting new readers by acting so unprofessionally. And I look at this unprofessionalism among writers as a form of jealousy. And this jealousy, you know, is starting to sour the marketplace. Um, in the publishing world, it's supposed to be like this. Again, it's supposed to be about what's on the page. And because every second that people are focused on what's going on with social media, they're not focused on the story that you wrote and on that page of that paperback or that ebook. And what's going on in that story on the paperback and ebook should be the most important thing to you because if people give a great impression of your story, they're going to come back and buy more books. What happens on social media can go, comes and goes, but customers are hard to keep, get and harder to keep. And that should be the primary focus on everyone out here in the publishing world. Unfortunately, too many people are focused on being anti-social on social media to focus on business. And business, again, should be the primary focus of everyone. Because when people see moderators doing things like changing the rules on Facebook groups, again, the customer is looking at this and the groups that they're joining, and they're getting turned off. Because when they see this type of behavior, they're saying to themselves, why do they keep changing the rules? I'm, I want to post something here, or I want to click this link over here, and I'm afraid that I may get either kicked out of the group or banned or something else. And again, that's going to slow down the foot traffic for not only that writer, but that Facebook group. I've seen Facebook groups slow to a crawl, all because a Facebook group moderator got upset because there was what they thought was a promotional billboard. But a lot of people are coming to those groups primarily looking for new books to read. A lot of people understand that a lot of times writers just don't have the time to sit there and continue having a conversation on social media. If we writers are on social media talking to people, then we're not working on our projects and we're not able to meet our deadlines. A writer such as myself usually has two or three projects in their queue. And when we go to social media, we're going to promote older product so that readers can find out about that work so that in t when we have time to launch a new book, they have a background in our writing style, a background in our story model, and have some background knowledge of our work. So that's part of one of the primary reasons why we do a lot of promotion on social media. And a lot of people think that we're just sitting there dropping links, but that's only a small part of the schedule. When I go to a place like a public library, because it's the only place I have internet access to, I go there primarily with a, with a schedule in mind, because I'm not just there doing book promotion. I'm also... I also write three blogs a week, and I update my blog, um, Sean James, Black Freelance Writer, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. So I have three blogs I'm writing. I'm also looking for full-time work, and I'm also promoting. So a lot of Facebook group moderators, they need to understand that we writers just aren't sitting there dropping links, trying to get sales. We also have other work to do, and we also, in many cases, like myself, have limited schedules to, to do this in. That handful of hours we're on Facebook is time that we're just trying to generate sales, again, for, of older books so that we can sell the new books that we have coming out, like I have coming out this Halloween with this new novel, Spellbound. This is a new novel I have coming out. Um, this, this is a draft. This is a, a proof copy. And while I'm at the library promoting, I come home in the afternoon and I start doing revisions on this book trying to get it edited and get it perfect as best I can in the mar so I can be ready for the marketplace. And my schedule, again, is a very busy schedule. And a lot of writers, their schedule is very busy. And a lot of Facebook group moderators, again, do not understand that writer just does not have time to drop two and three comments and go in to have a conversation with someone on social media. If, they, if, you're, if you're writing, it takes a lot of time just to write maybe a paragraph or even a chapter a day. 
So you really have to, you know, manage your time. So you really don't have time to get into conversations. And a lot of people on social media think you have nothing but time to just sit there and go into four and five minute conversations or 10 or 20 minute posts. And writing a paragraph like that, again, takes 10 or 15 minutes. And you, again, don't have that much time on the internet because you have business to take care of. You have emails to check. You have other social media to check. You have other um, research you're doing. And that may be only part of your day. The other part of your day, you may be going out and doing other research either in, out in the streets or the field, or you may be doing some real some writing um, of an upcoming project, or you may be doing like I'm doing right now, doing revisions on a project. So you're busy working throughout the day, and a lot of people think, oh, they're just dropping links and they're turning it into a promotional billboard, but that's only part of the schedule. And that's the only time we have to do that because we're trying to generate sales. Now, a lot of people, they think that people are going to go on these boards, but again, professional writers who are working, they don't have time to go on a board all the time. They might just pop in here or there, but they have work to do. And this is something that a lot of people don't understand. So they think that the guy's just dropping links and so-called spamming them, but that's not the case at all. They're trying to get readers because this is a business for them. They don't have time to keep going back and forth with people. The only writers who have time to sit there and write messages and go back and forth with people are writers who don't have any projects going on. When you have projects going on, you are in a state of constant busyness. You're constantly, you know, working and you're constantly trying to reach new readers, new audiences in your business phase part of it. And then you have to go home and go change hats and go to the creative phase of it. And a lot of these literary elitists, these book snobs, and these Facebook group moderators, they do just do not understand the business of publishing. They do not understand the business of writing. And they do not understand it from a comprehensive picture. They think that, you know, this writer is just dropping links, or some of these guys are sitting there, they're thinking that these books are rushed out. Many of these books sometimes take months and even years to put together, and a book like this project I'm just working on right now, The Spellbound, this book was planned a year ago, and I wrote the first, and I just finished the first draft um, a couple months ago, and I finished the second draft, and now I'm in the proof stage, and this is, I'm working on a schedule towards getting this book towards the marketplace for Halloween. And before that, I worked on four or five other projects, such as the, this book, Isis series book, Isis Bride of Dracula, and this book I had to put together, you know, start, I finished the script in January, and I had this project ready for the market in April, so it takes a lot of time to do this, and, and during this time, you know, you're re-revising and rewriting, and you're doing this in addition to trying to promote older books, like with this ISIS series, an older book like an ISIS All About the Goddess, which was published in 2013. So you're doing all that in addition to this, and then you have to come, when you're trying to do promotions, you have to deal with social media drama from people who, again, just do not understand the business of publishing, and they do not understand how they are hurting the business of publishing and the business of writing, because what's happening is the customers are seeing these behaviors and again many of them from what I've seen are getting turned off when they see these nasty comments on books on places like Amazon Goodreads they become angry not at the writers but at Amazon and many and people who are on Goodreads they get turned off and the same thing with the Amazon.com reviews they get turned off and then also on Facebook they get turned off because that's what alienates them because when they see these type of behaviors they go, look, I just don't want to be here. I don't want to deal with this negative energy. And they stop visiting the site. And instead of trying to go to those places to get help on a, on a view, what they do is they start, some in some cases, going someplace else to go get recommendations for books. And a lot of these people just don't see how their behaviors, again, are negative on the business. Because it, what it does is it keeps people from finding new writers like myself and finding our work and seeing how good it is or even thinking about giving it a try because they look at these behaviors and they get turned off they get angry they become upset 
because no one wants to go online to deal with all this snarkiness, this backbiting, this literary elitism, this book snobbishness. They just want to get an entertaining story. They want to enjoy themselves, because reading is supposed to be fun. And the behaviors I'm seeing are taking the fun right out of reading and making it where people will just say, look, if that, this is all that I have to deal with in the, with books, I'd rather just go watch some television or go watch some Netflix because I don't have to deal with that type of drama. But that's, that, again, that hurts the whole publishing business. And people really need to, to just, again, step back from the keyboard and really think about the things that they're writing, the way they're behaving, because, again, I just don't want to see another publishing industry collapse like I saw in 2008. And I look at these behaviors, and they're the type of behaviors that make it where people walk away from books and seeing how great they actually are. Spellbound will be out on Halloween. Is This is a young adult fiction book that's great reading. And I have a lot of other great books on Amazon.com as well. You can check them all out by clicking the link in the description box. That's all I have to say for this video. You can comment, rate, and subscribe.